Republicans trying to flip the U.S. House. We're really counting on Colorado's 8th Congressional District, Weldon Adams counties. It was thought to be a race that was tight but leaning their way. Then the Republican lost it narrowly. Now it appears a third party candidate in that race played a far larger role than anyone expected, including him. Going into election night, no House race in Colorado got more attention than Republican Barb Kirkmeyer versus Democrat Yadira Caraveo. Republicans thought they had the edge, but Caraveo won by less than a point. Nowhere in the picture was a third party candidate who didn't appear to campaign, but got nearly 4% of the vote. Conservative talk radio smelled a conspiracy to defeat the Republican. The Libertarian candidate in the 8th Congressional District has no campaign website. He has no social media. He has no phone number. He has no email address. He has abs no picture on, on any website. It's a protest vote, but you're not even going to see who you're voting for. It could have been Satan. His name is Dan. He's with the band. My campaign really was just to meet the disenfranchised people. Libertarian Dan Ward, sound guy for the metal band Driven by Turmoil. He gave the finger to the establishment by pulling 3.9% of the vote, easily enough to swing the race and about double the 1.9% average of the other Colorado Libertarians running for Congress. Dan can't explain his success. His volunteer campaign manager, Patty McMahon, can't explain it either. We took zero funds from anybody. I mean, we, we were very clear. We didn't even take it from our own party. The Colorado Libertarian Party told us they have no idea how a guy who campaigned only through concerts did so well. Two pollsters looked at the race for us and also weren't sure. Liberal and conservative operatives from groups that don't like Republican Barb Kirkmeyer all denied that they somehow secretly boosted up the sound guy from Driven by Turmoil. Frontman Rodney Rivera says, you know what? They just kept playing Dan's unofficial campaign anthem at shows and asking people to vote for him. And I think that's what really helped him, you know, push over the top like he did, you know. Did the metal guy really swing a closely watched congressional race? Probably. And until we know what really happened, maybe we should just take a cue from his theme song. Seriously, though, I mean, from pollsters to pundits to campaign insiders, could not find anyone today who could explain why that one libertarian candidate doubled the vote percentage of every other libertarian candidate running for Congress. Some suggested maybe part of it was sexism against two female candidates. Maybe it was a slightly larger unaffiliated population in that district. Low turnout could have helped if the metal crowd came out to vote. Perhaps it was simply the power of rock or something we don't know about yet.